Hey everyone, Lord Miko here and this is my run of uh, Equinox Aurora So we will start with the first one uh, Galicia, Galicinium uh, It is basically the um, the boss from the Ultimatia event uh, No, it was uh, Ultimatia Ultimatia was boosted but I believe the showcase was uh, The dancer girl, uh, what's her name? Oh. I keep blanking on uh, people's name. Uh, Panello, yeah. Uh, they actually work the exact same way. I believe the the health is slightly more and stuff. Oh yeah, I also speed up the video because I'm combining uh, all three uh, Lofinias into one video. So it's gonna be like a 40 minute video. 40 plus minute video, yeah. But uh, I'll put a timestamp for uh, the, the three different uh, Lofinias. And of course the ops and everything, you know. But uh, yes, uh, this boss it is very, very, very irritating. I'm not sure whether they changed anything about it. I can't remember um, exactly how similar it is to the Ultima Show event, or Panello event. But uh, I actually can only remember the minions having the ops. Like I don't remember whether the uh, the boss had the orb or not. I can't. I it, it's been too long. But yeah, so. For this uh, particular boss, he will have an AWP also, uh, his AWP starts at 6 I believe, and caps at 8. Then, um, and the uh, criteria for the AWP is to basically have 4 or more debuffs on the boss. Uh, and it sounds really really easy, I mean if you bring calls, your calls will basically overload the boss with uh, debuffs. But uh, I actually restart, restarted this stage a few times, uh, mainly because of my debuff management. So uh, you see that I actually replaced uh, Terra with Tifa right now. And uh, that's because the op comes out, yes, you saw, at um, 79%. And it was actually a mistake I should have brought uh, Tifa in earlier. Uh, or preferably when the minions die. And uh, not have the debuff on Tifa because then she will not be able to heal it off. Unless I overheal your her with a, a porum, which I, I think I did at the end, just just to get the the HP requirement uh, in because the HP requirement I believe is very tight. Uh, sorry, it's not very tight. It's actually twenty k. But yeah, so I mean, if you if you think that the HP is not gonna be an issue, then yeah, you don't have to clean. You don't have to overheal your your friend support. But the issue with this particular boss, okay, okay, it starts at eight. Okay, so um. The issue is that, wait, was it? Uh, I believe it started when he was on the ground. So, he actually cleanses himself when he takes off, and when it lands. So yeah, it's, it's really annoying to keep um the debuffs up, which is why I actually brought Sarah. Uh, she actually provides two debuffs of her, of her own, uh, wound, and uh, her unique debuff from her EX and her LD. Uh, I also brought Porum with her cry, her defense debuff down, her, her defense down debuff. And uh, I believe Por that's the. I mean, you can get confused, but I think the boss is immune to confuse. I'm not sure. Let me check. Uh, no, it's not. But I have not gotten a single uh, confuse, so um, I would say don't rely on it. And uh, I also brought Terra. Uh, Terra is really good because she can also put in two debuffs of her own, uh, two generic ones actually. I believe it's speed down and. Uh, I can't remember what was the other one. It's basically her, uh, her S1 and S2 basically. Uh, and what I tried to do for this fight after uh, a few trial and errors is to basically only use Chaos Wave when the minions are around. Uh, because with the new... Uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure whether they reworked her or not but... I mean she has a new... She, I mean you can realize her armor now, yeah. But um, with... Her Chaos Wave uh, it actually uh, damages the the minions enough such that when they f when they are first summoned at least, you can just use uh, her S1, the uh, Meltdown, to, to just uh, kill them off. You know, you don't have to... Uh, you can just focus on the boss and the splash damage will actually kill them. Uh, for the subsequent uh, summons, it didn't really happen. Uh, I mean, I believe they get tankier or just basically, you know, your usual brave reduction damage. A uh, brave reduction uh, going into the fight. 
Uh, but this is the way I, 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 I deal with it at least. I didn't delay the boss, I didn't delete the boss turn. Which is uh, very doable actually. I mean, the, as you can see, the boss, uh, he is not framed, his turns are not framed. So you can actually do that. And if you can, uh, you know, do that particular team comp, I really recommend it. You know, just delete the boss turn, don't let him take a single turn. The issue might be um, the the debuffs on your party, but maybe you can just replace uh, Sarah with someone like either Alti if you have her, or uh, um, oh my god, I I'm blanking on her name right now. Uh, Emmy, yes, Emmy. So basically, with Emmy, right, you can just uh, delete the boss turns, and you also inflict uh. Three different debuffs on, on the boss anyway. Three unique debuffs. And uh yeah, as you, as you notice, um at about uh 49% he cleans again, he removes his orb and he cleanses my team as well, you know. Removes all buffs, frame included. Oh I, yeah, I, I believe frame included. I'm not exactly sure why our forums uh one frame buff state, but yeah. And uh I made a few mistakes in my uh, previous runs when I was trying out. I basically um, forgot to refresh both Sarah and Horum's uh, LD effect, uh, LD buff. So uh, after the boss cleanse, my damage just uh, well, it just went down. The, went down basically. Yeah. So just remember to reapply your buffs and uh, the debuffs. Actually, you don't really need to apply your debuffs on the boss. Uh, uh, as you can see, that was a very very uh, hard hitting uh, move that the boss did. And the only reason why I, I managed to survive is because our Porom uh, puts a party white last stand on uh, Sarah. I, I believe it's a party white. I mean, with a I can't remember if it's a LD or her EX, but uh, I believe that's the one that gives the the last stand. And I mean, you saw Sarah was on one, and that was really, really lucky. You know, I have to restart the run again, mainly because uh, someone broke when the boss uh, did his AOE HP attack. So that's something to be very careful of. But again, if uh, you are going for the no turn. Away, then I believe that the boss uh, will not be able to do that. Uh, in fact, you only need to worry about uh, forced, forced mechanics, uh, such as when the boss summons the minions and stuff. I believe he, there is a forced mechanic uh, on that. Uh, other than that, um, yeah, that, that, that's that's the main gist of it. You have to kill the minions uh, within uh, seven turns uh, because they, there's no way to extend the the op count uh, but they are not particularly uh, they don't have a lot of health so that shouldn't be a problem if you have a lot of splash damage especially with uh, Porom and her uh, LD effect you know the, the follow up attacks uh, Sarah is there mainly to just apply all the debuffs but um, I faced some issue uh, uh, at the later part of the, the stage when I was uh, running out of uh, skill, skill uh, usages so I will say that if you, I mean obviously when the when the when the boss op is not up, then I will recommend that you just use her, her EX whenever possible. But if the if the op is up, I will I will say uh, you might want to uh, hold off your uh, your EX until uh, the boss cleanses if you're not doing the uh, the delete turn uh, way. Uh, right here I had to summon because uh, the minions were getting. Uh, had a little bit too much health as compared to the opt-in count so I had to summon because uh, as you saw I chaos wave with Terra but uh, I realized that I only realized after I did it that she didn't have a buff slot active so uh, the, the unique LD buff which we all took for granted it actually requires a slot for her to you know constantly go uh, five, turn, 5 turns in a row so if you don't have that buff up she, she doesn't she doesn't take any more turns after that so I was actually, it actually caught me off guard uh, right there and uh, yeah, I was actually considering uh, what I could do then because uh, Terra's turn had already passed and I couldn't go into the burst, uh, burst her burst sequence at least. So, and I was actually saving the burst sequence for uh, the later part of the fight, like to, to try and finish the boss off or if I really had to uh, burst with the minions ar around so that I can uh, basically destroy them. And my summon was supposed to be my uh, last resort, you know, when I, when I, when I couldn't do anything or when my health was uh, too low for Perum to, to heal up because uh, 
while her EX and her uh, LD can overheal and, and stuff, there, it, there is a certain amount that it heals. I believe it's like 50 to 70%. It's, it, it's quite significant, but uh, it is possible that you can't heal f your party members fully if uh, the last stand was triggered. So yeah, uh, I will also recommend that you bring so, uh, you bring uh, uh, Alexander here. The only worry was that, uh, like, like I was saying, uh, because of uh, Alexander's uh, buff, uh, Terra Terra's LD was not able to, uh, or Terra was not able to use her LD properly. So yeah, that was that was one of the issue. And as you saw, as you saw again, uh, last time triggered again uh, with the boss just focusing down Terra, and I was uh, kind of forced to heal her because I was kind of worried about this all attack. Uh, I was worried that he was going to cleanse and then follow and then resummon the, the the minions, and then I, I really had to uh, get rid of it. Get rid of the minions, you know, shift my focus to the minions. Uh, so right here, um, I was actually, yeah, going to going to the burst sequence with Terra. I wanted to cleanse the debuffs on on her, and then the boss went into his force encounter, you know, force forcing me to uh, basically uh, well, take the 10, 10 turns debuff again. So one way to 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 deal with it is to basically cleanse the debuff with uh, Panello. Uh. I'm not sure if we have any other character that can party white cleanse. Uh, I can't remember if Ferris cleanses uh, the party. I know that she cleanses the, the, the boss, the target. But yeah, I don't think she cleanses the, the party. So uh, right now we only have Panello. So if you want to, you can also bring a Panello call. You know, you save it towards the end. And uh, I also tried replacing all these debuffs. Uh, but for some reason, because it's frame or something, uh, it just doesn't get replaced by other frame uh, buffs. I'm not sure why also. Uh, that is uh, something that you see quite often in the second... Was it the second? Oh sorry, the, the, the third, the third, uh, the last one, the the, the one with the uh, snake lady, <laughs> the multi-hand snake lady. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about it when we come to it. Uh, it is towards the later part of the, the video anyway. Uh, so right here, um, I went to the boss sequence. The bosses are mainly more. I mean, once the minions are dead, uh, I can just shift my focus back to the boss. And at twenty five percent, we should be able to to, to handle him. Uh, not an issue, you know. I mean, the the third count is a bit tight. I believe it was at uh, seventy. Just let me double check. Yes, uh, seventy turn count. So uh, I managed to finish it in uh, sixty two. So. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't bringing a, a very, uh... Well, I, I brought Terra, you know, that's, that's kind of important. I, I had to burst. I was actually thinking of bringing uh, Yang in. And he might be uh, useful. But if you notice, uh, Terra wasn't really going very often, other than the, the, the time... I mean, I only Chaos Wave when uh, the, the, the minions were around. So, Yang may not be... Uh, be that viable because I don't believe he places any debuff on the, on the, on the bosses. Does he? I, I, I don't think so. He, he only applies his own buff to himself. Or maybe the generic the defense down buff. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but if I'm bringing power, maybe really, I don't really need him. Uh, Core might be actually quite useful here because he's Core and Yang. You know, if you can if you can find someone that can, that is able to put that many debuffs, uh, someone basically like Amy. Uh, you can actually just uh, bring Core or Yang, then they can just do all the follow up attacks. Then you don't have to worry about um, damage, so to speak. I mean, and especially when the minions are summoned, you know, all you have to do is just use uh, Terra's Meltdown and, and they'll basically die <laughs> from all the follow up attacks. And uh, right here, I uh, you saw that I still have one more Cypher uh, call. And uh, the reason why I'm not using it is because I actually expect the boss to cleanse himself uh, when he uh, rises. And I, I believe he does. Uh, I can't rem remember exactly when. Uh, right here, I was actually trying to kill him off, really. Uh, wait, did he rise? I can't remember. I think he, instead of rising, he just resummoned his minions. So I believe uh, it triggers at a certain point of the fight, or if you take too many turns. Uh, I mean, I will, if, if there's a trigger for it, I will definitely put it in the description. But yeah, so yeah, you see, he, he rises, and, and it wasn't, he wasn't even his turn. So. Yeah, I was basically just trying to kill him off right here. I uh, I saw the turns and I actually thought that it was a 60 turn count. 
uh, which is why you see me actually panicking with uh, a Terra. But uh, after finishing it, I realized, oh, you're 70, so I actually had uh, a little bit more uh, breathing room. Uh, yeah, so uh, right here, I just decided to finish it off and kind of hoping that uh, Cypher will kill. Uh, but at 2%, that was, uh, that was a long shot. But yeah, this, this fight is more or less in the back. Uh, the party members that are going are already overhealed and on the off chance that, that um I need to at least uh, here we go uh, here I am checking the the, uh, the turn count and the uh, HP requirement. See another force uh, force sequence where he will just resummon the minions. I don't know why he did it at one percent. So I believe it is based on the number of turns you take in a row. So that is something to, to take note if you're uh, going to uh, delete his turns or delay him. So yeah, uh I'll just take a short break, you know, take a sip of water before we get into the next video or the next uh, portion. Uh, if you if you need to see my my party artifacts and spheres, you can just uh, pause it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we start off the next video with uh, what what is it called? Uh, Equinox Aurora uh, Dawn. Okay, yeah, this is basically the, the boss rush one uh, where they featured uh, Dark Knight Cecil's uh, LD uh, without his bots, strangely enough. And I was thinking of actually bringing a, a launch team comp. I tested with uh, Cloud. Oh man, Whoa, my, my brain isn't working today. But yeah, I tested out with, with the, the, you know, the, the new team comp, the one with Cloud. Uh, Cass and Leo. Okay, oh, that, that took me a while, but yeah. And uh, you, you saw, basically that happened to to uh, Leo, and he didn't have last ten. Uh, Shantoto has an uh, inherent last ten in uh, that that she has, so you don't have to worry if the boss is targeting her. And uh, Leo just died, so yeah, it kind of ruined my <laughs> my um launch team com. So uh I instead decided to bring a Rosa so that uh I can just put a uh, re-race on, on my team members and if need be I can just tank out tank it out. And I believe at one point of time uh, Rosa did die and uh, the re-race kicked in so yeah I was kind of thankful that I brought her so I don't have to worry about um, dying. Uh yeah, uh, Shantoto, uh, she's actually a uh, synergy and they, there was a, a rework for her. Uh, her rage aerial will trigger again if the bosses has a debuff, uh, her, her unique debuff that she put, puts with almost any of her skill. So, yeah, uh, for, for this stage, the boss actually resists magic, but the nice thing about Shantoto is that her EX actually has an elemental in peril. And the nice thing is, it's kind of all her elements. I think because uh, I was uh, after applying that I was hitting a uh, cap damage you know so it's kind of nice uh, I don't believe it was because of the call mm -hmm. and okay anyway uh, this boss um, he has a very strong signal target move so you kind of have to uh, be careful of that again you can delay or delete instance that that is uh, one of the methods you can do uh, right here I bring Tifa just to do as much damage as possible you know to trick so start the op to activate the op basically and the op requirement is to make sure that uh or not make sure it, uh, the op requirement is to uh, prevent him from taking a turn and if you read the description you will actually notice that he is immune to terror hp silence uh, you know all the, the the usual stuff that we've been using and uh it took me a while to realize that they actually wanted you to uh, either bring a shantoto call and uh, delay the boss or to uh, paralyze him because that's like the, on the only way that he's not immune the problem with, uh, with using a shantoto call is that uh, he is still required to take a turn he just cannot act so if you bring a shantoto call and uh, you apply the debuff and everything and the minute he goes then you you will face the issue of hey what happens when he when i need another paralyze you know so that is the reason why I actually brought Shantoto and uh, Cloud. Uh, that was my um, 
just in case, you know, just in case I couldn't get to Shen Total Stun in time, or just in case uh, there wasn't enough uh, paralysis for for uh, the boss, uh, the, the boss anyway. Another way is to actually just bring a uh, drum, and you can apply his unique paralyze also. But yeah, uh, just have to worry about um, the turn order. As you can see, it was getting really tight because you you need the boss to take a turn, like I was saying. So yeah, right here, apply the Shantoto's debuff. I should have used a uh, poison instead of the uh, aerial. The aerial should be only be used when uh, I am able to do the additional attack. But yeah, uh, if not, then this is personally the way I feel the easiest one. Amount of three. It took it took me the least amount of time actually, <laughs> as compared to the the the, um, the first and the third one. The third one was the worst. Uh, mainly because I was very stubborn and I wanted to bring a uh, spoiler alert. But yeah, I wanted to bring Noctis. They they, they reworked him as well. Uh, they gave him his ID bots at least. So I'll try to use him more often. But yeah, uh, uh, I was being very stubborn by trying to die die and bring Noctis. But I was also um. I mean, the last boss, the requirement for the orb is not tied to any one of the boosted characters. Uh, unlike this boss, this boss is very obviously uh, sh trying to showcase uh, Shantoto. And also he's really tanky towards the end of the uh, second life. His first life isn't... Well, he kind of melted in the in the first life. Mainly might be due to uh, me bringing Tifa in. But yeah, uh, also uh, the turn count for this uh, second boss is very tight, it's at 60 turns. So, uh, they might be trying to get you to use um, Noctis, but yeah, for some reason, they seem to really hate Noctis in this um, uh, event because one of them is immune to or is um, resistant to range. I believe it's the first one. This, this boss is uh, resistant to magic. <laughs> I, I find it quite ironic that he's resistant to magic and they're trying to showcase Shantoto for it. I guess it kind of showcases her EX uh, effect. Uh, I'm sure that's the, the rationale. But yeah, okay, so the first boss is immune to range. So Noctis does mainly range if you, if you read his kit. The only range, the only uh, ability that is not range is his EX. Even his burst is a range. Second boss is immune to uh, magic. Uh, not immune, but uh, resistant to magic. And the last boss is, you know, Resistant to darkness, darkness. But um, other than that, there's it, it has no resistance. Uh, it is uh, immune to uh, HP summons. So yeah, yeah. Uh, the first boss is not immune to HP silence, so it is possible to uh, HP silence it. But the main issue that I faced was not really the HP silence. It was more of the 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 debuffs that he put on my party. Yeah, here is where Rosa died, uh, as you can see. And thank God for re-raise, you know. Uh, I was actually checking the uh, HP requirement to see that I'm still within it. Uh, but it's kind of hard, you know. For some reason, it, just, it, it doesn't take into account immediately. Especially for um, healing. But yeah, I, I, I suspected that the amount was um, basically just Rosa's current missing health. So, uh, I mean, that is an issue. I can just heal it up. Uh, you also saw that I was uh, saving some of my... Um, my calls for, for this part of the fight at least because the boss actually cleansed himself uh, I believe it was uh, one of the moves that he, he will cleanse himself either that or when he dies <laughs> so uh, it's, it's one or the other if you really need to you can just play back when I kill him off but other than that yeah I, I, I keep forgetting to um, get uh, Rosa's Bloom uh, even though I actually kind of made it a point uh, especially in the, after the previous video after I realized that hey, Rosa's um, Bloom isn't, uh, isn't maxed out you know? uh, I'm a perfectionist I know it didn't matter but it, it, it bugs me that, that, it, that it's not maxed out at least but th this fight is one of the uh, well, after comparing it to the first and the third one, it is so much more manageable. The the op when the op comes out, uh, it is very generous. It comes out at uh, fifty percent, I believe. When um 
on the first life of, of, of the boss. Hold on, let me, let me, let me take a look at the, the description. Uh, it was uh, actually indicated. Uh, right here I have to actually um, cut the music out because uh, for some reason uh, it is copyrighted. So uh, please bear with it. Uh, it's only a short while. The burst sequence was actually pretty, pretty fast. And I'm really going uh, 1.5 times really. So it will be even faster. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this boss, the op will trigger at Yes, when the uh, HP will drops below 50 and it will cancel when uh, you kill it. So when it uses uh, Karaga. And after that, it will trigger again when uh, it's at 60%. So uh, there is a chance that you can actually uh, ignore the op criteria and just, you know, burst him down. It is very, very possible, especially if you can uh, hold off your burst sequence to when the boss revives. So, you know, at 59% you just burst so you have uh, more time to uh, well, more breathing room I guess yeah so uh, right here I off my silence mode silent mode and music is back on so yeah anyway uh, coming back to the fight um, right here he's at 53% I was actually considering uh, summoning I just didn't like the fact that he was going to take two of his turns twice uh, in a row uh, yes I did silence him once but um, the outcome is actually pretty healthy, so I I was considering uh, delaying him with the big beam, but I feel like he wasn't a threat here, so I wanted to get uh, damage in. I guess or, or I had to. I don't believe I had to uh, uh, reapply his ex buff. I can't remember exactly why I, I used the ex instead of the big beam, but yeah. I think I was trying to save skills because I didn't have a lot of blade beams left. Uh, another, well, what I could have done differently was also instead of uh, bursting with cloud, I could just use a shantoto. Uh, it would actually done. I I think it might have done more damage. You know, with her um, rage aerial, it will trigger um, a total of four times per use. So with the LD active, it should be eight times. So it, you know. There is quite a lot of damage. Uh, yeah, I mean, the boss... I, I don't believe the boss went again. And even if he did, it was just to trigger... Uh, to, to, you know, make sure that the op, uh, op, count, op count is uh, healthy. But, yeah, I mean, with this particular thing... Com I mean, if you don't want to bring Rosa, you can bring someone like that. But then Cecil. Just to be very, very careful when he's using his uh, single target uh, attacks, because that is quite painful so if you break in it you might die and the only reason why I didn't was cause one Rosa could apply three rays and two Shantou had last time so yes Paladin Cecil does um, bring some yeah right here I was actually uh, worried about the turn count cause 54 turns and he had 13% HP and the way I ended this fight was pretty hilarious but yeah we'll come to it we'll, we'll actually see it pretty soon but yeah coming back to what I was saying Paladin Cecil um, you might have some issues uh, surviving it because while he does have a uh, HP reduction, it might not be enough. That's what that's what I'm saying. Sorry, my throat was getting a little bit dry. Uh, anyway, yeah, I 59, 56 uh, turns, and uh, I didn't want the boss to take a turn. I also wanted Cloud to try and finish him off because. He is the one with the most damage to be honest. He is not Shantoto, he is definitely not Rosa. Well, Shantoto maybe, you know, with her rage aerial, but the thing was that uh, she wasn't fast enough to go again. So right here, I saw that he was actually dying, he was at what, 3% health. And uh, it was just nice that I had, to, I had the bleed beam free skill. I saw the turn count, 59. And I just spammed as much uh, critical crush as I could. And it was enough to kill the boss. Because if, if it wasn't enough, I could take one more turn, but Cloud had to finish him off, you know. I mean, alternatively, I, I could have just, you know, let, let the boss take a turn and Shantoto would definitely go. She might be able to finish him off with, with her rage aerial instead of, you know, spamming with uh, critical, spamming critical crush with uh, Cloud. But yeah, okay, on to the last one, Meridian. This, this I feel personally is the worst, mainly because I was... <laughs> I... I I really wanted to uh, bring Noctis in. And um, so my, my strategy for this is to basically try and 
bring the bosses down to uh, to where they, they will activate the AWP, which is 79% I believe. So once they activate the AWP, they will also cleanse themselves. Uh, if you let them take a, 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 a turns also, they will also cleanse themselves uh, every once in a while. It is one of their moves, it is called a uh, Heavenly... Oh shoot, what was it? Heaven's Might. That is so annoying. So it removes all its uh, debuffs and then apply 6 buffs. I, I believe it removes its own buffs as well. Uh, let me check. Uh, Heaven's Might. Yes, remove all buffs and debuff. Silver frame included. So uh, Sephiroth's uh, debuff was too state. Sephiroth, Sephiroth and Kadash. The, the, those gold frames basically, but yeah. Uh, it removes everything. It's basically a clean slate. And then it reapplies all its buffs. So, um, with all its buffs active, it is a real pain to deal with. You will be doing significantly lesser damage, you know. So, um, I actually ran a, a few team comps here. I brought Harden Cecil, I brought... Uh, who did I bring? I brought uh, a tank, a uh, Galuf. Yeah, I tried to bring Galuf. Uh, the reason why Galuf didn't work here was because uh, the when the recast gauge is full, they actually do a, a AOE HP attack and it hits twice and everybody will die except Galuf. Uh, I actually made it that far. Galuf had 0 HP and the only reason why he, he didn't die was because he had the undying thing, you know. But yeah, uh, it, it's, a pain, it's a pain to deal with me. Uh, I, yes, uh, I brought in a Cloud of Darkness to try and get them to 79%. Sorry, 69%. It triggers at 69%. I mean, you saw one of them cleanse at 79, I believe. That's why I keep remembering 79. Yeah, so they will cleanse at 79. They will... I believe they will cleanse again when... Um, was it 79? Oh, I can't remember if it was uh, 79 or because they took a turn. Sorry, I keep saying 79, but right now they're not even at 79%. <laughs> but yeah, um, so I believe it was when because they took a turn. And uh, I tried to bring buff here and take their, steal their buffs. But the annoying thing was, um, first of all, Balthier didn't have the LD bot and he couldn't steal enough. His his auras were, were, were nice to have, you know, but um, it just wasn't enough, I guess. Uh, I also brought... Uh, Instead of a, a tank, uh, they are immune to HP silence, but they are not immune to terror. You know, so I was thinking, hey, let's bring Elnash. And it almost worked, you know, it almost worked. I brought one down to, uh, I believe, uh, 29%. And the reason why uh, I couldn't finish him off was because um, I ran out of uh, Elnash's buff. So, I mean, sorry, not buff, uh, LD. So, the op for this. Meridian or whatever this this stupid boss is called, Merilith. Okay, ah, uh, is to basically apply poison on them. So normally you don't really want these bosses to take a turn because they really like to spam HP attacks. But the op criteria is to let them take a turn. In fact, it is to let them take a turn and uh have set on them. And so I was thinking, you know, Elnash does apply set. He actually has his own unique HP silence. Why not try him out? And he almost worked, yeah, he almost worked. In fact, I think um, Elnash with Ferris and Noctis will have definitely worked. Uh, if not, if you... Well, I was really stubborn with Noctis, but basically if you actually bring someone like uh, Paladin Cecil, I'm pretty sure it will have worked out. Yeah. But actually Noctis also works well with um, Elnash because if you... His HP... His uh, EX takes a while to recharge, so if you really need um, him to go, you really need to uh, reapply Terror, you can just press Noctus LD and then you know just keep going with um, with Elnash. And so and, and most of the time at the end of the the um, when the LD buffs ru uh, run out, you can you more or less have your EX ready. But the issue was that even though it places a unique frame, silver frame actually, uh, frame a debuff on the bosses, it doesn't replace the one that they had. That is the annoying thing. In fact, for some reason, the only one that uh, managed to replace was... Uh, I'm not sure whether it replaced because they apply 6 buffs, you know. But yeah, the only one that, that, that managed to stick was the set from his LD. <laughs> and uh, that, that is kind of why I, I gave up, because they actually cleansed themselves for times. Uh, 
assuming that they don't uh, assuming that you let them go and they are, they are they have the terror debuff on because they will not cleanse themselves uh, that way you know the taking the turn and cleanse themselves that kind of way they will only cleanse themselves at specific percentage of the health so uh, I couldn't get Balthier to go after or before Elnash yeah I couldn't get Balthier to go before Elnash so he could uh, take away 3 debuffs with his uh, types of fate so Elnash couldn't reapply uh, Warp and Terror uh, and then he just went downhill from there so like I was saying the closest I got was I think 29% when they cleansed themselves again again and then um, at that point of time I was like mm, no I, I, I don't think I'll finish I, I can finish them off right here I have no more uh, Elnash LD to reapply Sap and that is also one of the reasons why I, I decided to bring a uh, fairies. So I brought fairies and Galuf because I was thinking I could just counter them, you know. But uh, right here, I believe I was just checking for their for their debuffs. Uh, I was just trying to see if uh, Noctis was able to place his um, uh, point blank point blank warp debuff on them. And it, that is another thing. See. Uh, Again, it, that doesn't replace uh, frame buffs. I, I'm, I'm not sure why. I can't. I, I think it's a mechanic of uh, Apromnia. I'm not sure, but apparently, if they have frame buffs, you cannot replace it with frame debuffs. <laughs> that, that's quite sad, but yeah. So that is the reason why I actually bought Fairy. She, she will uh, dispel the the bosses and then apply her own uh, debuffs. And just nice, he also applies set. So she, it, it, this particular stage is more of a showcase for her. I mean, she's perfect for this stage. She applies, uh, she cleanses, and she deals with the pop. The only issue uh, I had was that I had to retry this a few times. Uh, one was because, for some reason, uh, even though uh, World of Light's LD was up, uh, the Rika's ability uh, still went through. As in, I, I took HP damage and my party just died. <laughs> I wasn't sure why the why that happened. Uh, I was very very sure that I had uh, uh, shoes up, but yeah. So I, that was uh, a dead run. Uh, another one was because I didn't manage the op counter well enough, and uh, because of how uh, Noctis LD works, I kept going and going and going, and basically the bosses couldn't take a turn, and then it just triggered and I died. I mean, it's kind of hard to to, to see the op. Uh, if you notice some of the times. Uh, the angle of the of the fight, for some reason, uh, the the pause button is uh, covers the uh, B's op count, so I couldn't see the op count as well. But I, anyway, uh, that was another dead run. Uh, yeah, most of the time that was it. So, uh, in fact, I think that was that was the, the two runs that I did with them. Yeah, it was it was so annoying. Uh, so. You, you actually see me uh, reapplying uh, Royal of Light's uh, shields just before they actually do their recast and if possible I will actually try and uh, split it such that I will only have to eat one of their recast ability at a time so not two in a row it, it, it is possible to survive two in a row I have done it in my previous runs as well it is just that I will not take the risk because they do deal some uh, brave damage before they apply their, or they do their HP attacks so if your shield is low enough, there is a chance that you could eat uh, that attack, and it is and it hits very hard. So yeah, uh, yeah. So Warrior Light is actually kind of perfect for here. Uh, he he is able to taunt. He applies uh, shields. So I would actually just recommend that you uh, apply taunt on one person, one of the bosses, and let the other bosses just randomly try and you know take down your other party member's shield because if you uh, Torn for both. Warrior of Light shield will actually go down very very fast, and you will not you will have to reapply the shield very often. Uh, it, it's not actually an issue because uh, I actually noticed that I had to uh, use uh, HP. Not really use. I didn't really have to use, but I noticed that I was doing that quite often. So yeah, you can. That is entirely up to you. You can just uh, turn them both if you have, if you want to. And, but the, the thing I would recommend is you only reapply his LD when it is running out. 
because uh, it is for 15 turns. So I, I, I believe I reapply it when it was a single digit. So as to um, really maximize its well, the, the active turns with the LDA on. I, I didn't have to, uh, I, I realized that I still had one more LD towards the end of the fight, but yeah. In fact, you can actually just reapply the LD when uh, the, re the recast sketch is about to go off. Because you will also put shields on everyone. That is uh, one way. But uh, if not the bosses, yeah. They. Don't, I believe the only s attack they have that is a single target is. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Absolute Chaos? I think I think that was the only one that... It, it hits a few times, but it is only brave. It doesn't go into a HP attack. And I believe everything else does. Um, they have one AoE attack that does only brave, but it applies a HP set as a buff on themselves, so you have to cleanse that. It, it doesn't uh, set that much HP from you guys, from, from uh, your party members. It's about 800 for, for my characters. But it is annoying because my only heal is a uh, Royal Lights uh, EX. So yeah, uh, that I, I believe is uh, something trials. I can't remember what it's called, but it's, it's very annoying. Uh, if not, most of its all attacks are HP attacks. Uh, they have one called Pouring Rods, that is also a Brave to HP attack. They have the Recast Gate, which is an AoE HP attack. They have uh, Absolute War or something like that, I can't remember. Uh, it is also a brave into HP attack. In fact, that was one of the deadlier ones, uh, along with the recast. Uh, so it is basically absolute chaos, but with a HP attack at the end. So yeah, World of Light Shield really, really saved me. If not, you will want to have like a, a ton of brave if you are going to eat it. Especially, so so I would say um, Iron Cecil, uh, but you know all those that, that gives a bunch of brave to the party members. To make sure that they are able to, to tank out the brave attack first of all, and then, um, if possible, uh, overheal, you know, so that they can survive the the HP attack that follows up. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why I, I summoned here. I didn't have to. Um, the outcome was fine. Really. Uh, it might be due to the fact that uh, was the LD buff active? I can't remember. I believe it was because um the I, I felt that the turn count was getting low and right 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 here I I summoned because I couldn't see where A's turn was. Uh, basically I had a bunch of turns and then a B and then another bunch of my turns and then B again. So I didn't know where A was. So and and I didn't want to restart this to be honest. I restart this so many times. So I decided to just summon instead to you know bring the other turn forward. That that is actually one way you know. So yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't see where A was on the turn order and that got me kind of worried because uh, as I said, I need the boss to take turns I don't want them to take so often but I need them to take turns once in a while in fact, uh, I think towards the end of the fight I kind of staggered it such, uh, staggered when I attack a specific boss because um, uh, as you can see, it was at 3 turns so I couldn't even see where uh, it was so if I had if I didn't summon then I, I would definitely have to restart this one as well. And it's cut uh, it's probably not this fault, you know, with his LD and stuff. Uh, this was the single attack that I told you about. Many hits, many brave hits, followed by a single target HP. So at this point of the fight I finally applied my last call. Uh, I suspected that they wouldn't um, be able to to cleanse again, so I just applied all my all my calls, you know, all my debuffs try and get as many to stick as possible and try and uh, kill focus fire on one first uh, and the reason why I picked A was because uh, B is going to go so I didn't have to worry about uh, B's uh, op count so if on, on the off chance that I'm not able to get uh, A to go in time for the op then I will at least try and rush him down that was the plan at least but uh, if, you, if you notice the turn count uh, it was kind of difficult with the amount of health they have as, as usual, these Lufinia bosses get really really tanky towards the end of the fight. And it's so annoying. But yeah. So you see me switching switching here and there. Uh, that is my my logic at least. I wanted to get one low enough. Preferably the one that is not going to go. So that, like I said, if I couldn't get it... Uh, if I couldn't get it to go, I could at least kill it off. Uh, this boss 
does have a rich mechanic. Uh, I believe when I killed one off, the other one uh, said it was annoying or something like that, but uh, it didn't cleanse its debuff. That was a good thing. So, uh, you don't have to worry. In fact, one method I was actually considering to uh, consider trying was uh, to just focus fire on one. Because uh, the percentage, the health percentage where they will cleanse themselves, both will trigger, but uh, it will not trigger again if one hits the health percentage. So if one is at 100% and one hits the first mark at I believe 79%, uh, both will cleanse, but if the uh, second one hits 79, uh, it won't happen. So you can actually just focus fire on one, deal with the, the cleansing. In fact, the best thing was that the orb will also appear on one of the bosses only, it will not appear on both. So it re there is some leeway to it. The only issue that you might have uh, doing so is that the turn count is at 70, so it's quite low. And uh, you might face issues with it if you focus on just one. But yeah, I mean, I finally managed to finish this stage. It, it took me a few hours. I started off at uh, after lunch. I finished the first one before lunch and the other two took me un uh, until like 5. I mean, I'm doing the recording now, but yeah. At 5, but yeah, so it took me a while. I mean, it is 3 Lufinias. I'm combining all 3 into one video uh, so that it's easier for you guys as well. If you really need to just watch one, you can just go to that specific timestamp and, and then, uh, you know, get what you need to get from, from, from the video. But yeah, uh, right here, I actually thought that uh, Ferris was able to uh, finish him off. 3%, that was a stretch, uh, uh, unless I used uh, her LD. But yeah, uh, I thought it was actually pretty fitting that I finish him, finish the boss off with Noctis. Oh yeah guys, I've been talking for about 46 minutes straight. Uh, I hope you guys are also able to clear all 3 stages. And yeah guys, uh, good luck with your Lufinia and I'll see you guys in the next one.